everybody and welcome welcome to episode two i have another phenomenal woman that's going to share with you who she is her journey how she hears from god and listen we created this podcast for busy women for women of faith for women that have careers we have families we have businesses and sometimes people are saying how in the world can you get it all done well i got my answer but you will see as you tune in every Monday at 6.30 a.m., you're going to see that we all got different ways that we get it done. But the bottom line is we get it done. So help me to welcome to the stage Coach Lily Williams. I call her Coach Lily. And Coach Lily is here with us on this morning. Hey, Coach. Good morning. Good morning, our podcast land. <laughs> I love it. I'm so glad that you could take some time to be with us on this morning because you have a lot of things that God has called you to do. And one thing I see when I see you is that we can do it all. We can do it all. So tell us about yourself, your business, your career, what all you got going on right now, your family, just, just share with us. Wait, well, I know you don't have all day long because it would take me all day to tell you everything that I'm going through. So I just hit the highlights, the really, really highlights that all right. everybody busy. Let me take, because you know, we wear so many hats. All yeah. of us women do. And we particularly do. our women that are working outside the home or we're professionals or we've got small businesses. We are always on the go. We're always thinking about what we can do. But you know what? It's for other people. That's right. Our business, our ministry, everything that we're doing is for somebody else. Isn't that wonderful? It is. And I want to let you know this. Uh, I am a mother. Uh-huh. Uh, look, my sweet husband and I, we have a blended family of five children, nine grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Awesome. So, yes. So I have to wear all those hats and do birthday parties and all those kinds of things. And I am a small business owner mm -hmm. and perfecting destiny life coach. And perfecting right. destiny uh, empowerment services are my two businesses. And I work with teenagers. I teach teens how to live free from drugs, alcohol, violence, and suicide ideation. Those are my specialties. Those are my niches. Yeah. And coach, you know, too, that uh, I am a licensed ordained minister, so I have to help right. in my church. That's yes. Right. And when we were saying we can do all of these things, the other thing we got to put on the end is with him through with Christ. Christ. Yes, That's right. he, he gives us the strength to do it all. He gives us the wisdom to do it all. He gives us the know-how. And you know what? He's right there with us. Sure is. Yes, I could not do it without him. Couldn't do it without him. Now, how long have you been married, Coach? Oh, well, let me tell you this. Oh, uh, <laughs> sit tight, y'all. <laughs> Sometimes they say, well, um, what, what's your husband? Who, who's, who's your husband? Uh -huh. I say, I, I say, oh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I'm able to say that is this. My first husband and I, we were together like 32 years before he transferred. He went on to heaven. Okay. 30 some years. And, okay. and my second husband, he was married 30 years. So both of us have a 30 year plus relationship with our first spouses wow. before they transition on to heaven. So you both were widows first. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. And how but, long have you been remarried? Uh, look, 22 years. I, look, I feel like, uh, is it Oprah? Who would they say? I've been married all my life. That's 50 something <laughs> years of marriage. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And I look, love. I've had two good husbands in one lifetime amen that's a blessing how many people can say that that's two right. in one lifetime that and is. I asked, I, let me tell you this it was so funny i said to my husband he had done something and i said i am so happy that the lord put us together i yeah. said what did i do to deserve such a good husband oh i told him i said the lord told me what i did the lord said because you were so good to that first one. Amen. That I gave you another one to be good Amen. to. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now that's a whole nother subject because, you know, a lot of times when we think about relationships, 
we are the men always get a bad rap but it is not just the men that's not doing what they're supposed to do i know women don't do what they're supposed to do either so it is a testament that mm -hmm. we are women of faith and we know how to honor the men that god send into our life yes and trust us with his son mm -hmm. that is a whole nother session right for, mm -hmm. for those women that's believing god for a spouse can god trust you with his best can god trust you with his son uh, that that's a whole sermon right there coach lily it is it <laughs> is and we could spend another whole day on that one too <laughs> yeah. now mm -hmm. you got something else um special going on the, uh, during this season um mm -hmm. during the election season as well what you got going on let me tell you this. I am the Democratic nominee for the North Carolina House of Representatives. Yay! Uh, this is such an honor to be running in that position. Uh, I was asked by people that thought that I would be the best candidate. Yes. And I accepted it. And we are running. We're running and we're running a race to win. That's right. Yes, uh, in our North Carolina uh, public schools, we're losing our teachers. And I assume everybody else, all our states around are almost in the same shape that we're in. But our tight span dollars go into our private schools are not helping us any. And wow. that's the top of my agenda. Being an educator, because I was in the schools for 30 years plus. I was in the classrooms. Then I was assistant principal. Mm -hmm. Then I was principal. Right. Mm -hmm. I've been director of education, so I know that we cannot survive without public education. That's right. We, we would have an uncivilized society. Yeah. And when you pay attention to the language, when they're talking about making America great again, uh -huh. and dismantling education, all those things, that is what they are. Real. That's their goal. That's the yeah. underlying goal with all this drama that we're going through right now. So with, we've got to have people in place. We've got to have people in place to stop that. So we've got to have some people uh, that are hearing the voices of the constituents that we'll be serving. That's right. And I love that you come from that background. So you're not just talking about education. You've done 30 plus years there and you went through the ranks in the school system. So you know what works. And then, you know, you can speak from a place of experience as well. And you don't mind using your voice because sometimes, you know, we, we talk about it and we talk about it in private or we talking about it on social media. But you got to jump in. You got to get your feet in the game like you really got to get in the game. So we want to say thank you for getting in and getting involved and being that strong voice for your state. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I count it an honor and a privilege to have been asked. That's right. That's right. Now, coach, with everything that you got going on, you got children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. You got a spouse. You have ministry. You have two businesses and you got a campaign that you're running. How are you putting self-care in there? How are you? When, when do you find time to do the self-care piece for you? What I really do and I've learned to do, and it wasn't overnight, right. but I've learned to not get distracted mm -hmm. all of the distractions that come in your day if it's not gonna give me something on my roi that's right. a return for my investment investing <laughs> my time energy and, and and just attention to it yeah i'm not going to let it in my head mm. that's what i'm telling my teenagers some things you don't let in your head yeah so if it's not going to promote me and what I'm doing and make life better and improve the quality of my life. I don't have, I can't, I can't do that. Right. And, and, and I joke with my family and my teenagers. I say, I'm allergic to that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we're allergic to foolishness. We're not, we're not allowing it in. We cannot. We cannot. I so, love that. Mm -hmm, you cannot. I mean, you don't get time back. If you waste five, 10 minutes, I mean, you know, and sometimes I, you know, even when I'm meditating, I, I, it's everything is purposeful and it's not hard. You, you will say, well, I don't have to write down this and write down this and write down this. It's life. Right. It's where you're living, where you're going. And see, the first thing you do before your feet hit the floor in the morning, you go ahead and ask the Lord, 
to help you. I, I said, Lord, help me <laughs> not to take two steps today over the same thing. <laughs> not right. to take two steps. That's right. I want him to order. If he orders your steps, you won't lose any time. Mm, that's good. You can't get time back. And what I hear you saying now, I know this is what I heard when you was talking that you got some healthy boundaries in place and that helps with your self-care. Those boundaries matter. Talk about that because because and I know this is your area of expertise because sometimes we feel like we got to say yes to everything. We've got to be involved in everything. You got to rescue everybody. What does those healthy boundaries look like? How does that help us with our self-care? Because we're women, we've got that nurturing spirit. Yeah. And because we're women, we want to see things done and done right. We've kind of got that takeover spirit. We want to... <laughs> <laughs> and you you too we say, <laughs> we say well i need to do it uh -huh. and we've learned you know in our businesses and with this campaign if there's somebody that can do this half i don't know if i i don't i won't accept half now but if they can do it 80 percent right as good as i can do it that's right then we need to go ahead and let them do it mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand we are we're adults. We're women of God. We're professional women. Yep. We're mothers. And we're mature women. Yeah. And we ought to be able to say, I'm not able to do that today. Or we ought to be able to say, that will not fit in my schedule. Mm. That won't fit. Let me tell you this. I did a workshop <laughs> at my brother's church. Uh-huh. And uh, the workshop was entitled, This Will Work For Me and This Will Not. All right. So one of the assistant pastors, when he saw me again, he said, you're not coming back to do another workshop at our church. <laughs> I said, I said, what's the problem? What's going on? He said, everything I tell my wife, she said, this won't work for me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I said, he said, every time I say something, or I want this or that, or do this or that, she said, this won't work for me. <laughs> I said, oh, good. She got the message. But that's what we do. We have to empower one another. That's fine. And, and at the end of the day, too, let me say this. Um, I just had the privilege of preaching my dad's funeral. Not and one of the things that I said in that funeral procession was that we should never get in a position that we say, I would have, yeah. could have, should have, or I wish this or that. We as women, we, we, we'll take on some guilt. We yeah. will carry guilt by the truckload. Right. Yeah, take on that guilt, yeah. And, you know... My podcast audience, I know I'm talking to some ladies that are younger than me, but when you get my age, you, you got a different perspective. Yeah. <laughs> when you get as mature as I am, you are not concerned about, you know, your friends, what they say, this, that, and the other, you know, right. you're kind of like, uh, this won't work for me. Right. <laughs> and this is my time. And if I did not do that, I just didn't do it. That's right. Or if I did not do that, there was a reason why I didn't. Those kinds of things. Right. And it's okay. It is. Okay. That's right. It is. That is the biggest thing. We got to know that it's okay. I, I use the words do, dump, and delegate. What I can mm. do, I do. What I can't do is dump. And like you said, if they can do it 75, 80%, then I'm going to mm -hmm. delegate it so that I can focus on the things that only I can do because I'm going to use that coach Lily because some stuff just ain't going to work for me. That's not going to work for me. <laughs> I love that. I love it. It's so simple. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to work for me. <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. And you put a period there. Yeah. Sometimes you do. Now, if, if I'm talking to, you know, I've got to be, I've got to have enough wisdom to know if I'm talking to a teenager, sometimes I've yeah. got to do another link and explain, you know, what well, this yeah. won't work for me because, but right. sometimes you and I, we're able to say, no, this won't work for me. Put a period there period. and turn the page. Period. 
and turn yes. the page. Period. And, and turn, turn the page. Mm -hmm. Like it's not even up for discussion. I love Thank that. You. Thank you. <laughs> and that does come with maturity. You you really led right into that perfectly because that does come with maturity. You have to get to a place where listen, I'm trying to please God and I know exactly mm -hmm. what my purpose and my assignment is. And anything that comes to take me out of that, that's just not where I'm headed. That's not going to work for me. So I love that. Distraction. This it's a distraction. I'm not on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It could be good, but it may not be my assignment. So mm -hmm. you got to right. take it to where it is. Now, with all of this too, coach, how do you get time in for your own walk of faith? Like where, how do you study? What does that time look like? Your time alone with God, what does that look like? Usually what happens at, at the end of the day, when I kind of like after, you know, you get your bath and you kind of like shut down and yeah. everybody else is kind of like, you know, getting ready to go to bed or they're asleep or they're in their rooms or whatever. I am able to just, I love listening. Uh, so I, sometimes I do sermons. I have people to preach on and I go to subject areas of whatever it is I'm needing or wanting that day. Right. Uh, uh -huh, subject area. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, when I read the word of the Lord, sometimes I will write out a scripture and yeah. I put it on my refrigerator. I put it on my wall. I put, it, and it's what I need. Yeah. I can walk by and look at that. And it like, for instance, this is a good time to make a reference. Um, I can walk past my refrigerator and, and it will give me a strip to say something like, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made that I can rejoice and be glad in it. But it doesn't stop right there. This says something good. Is going to happen to me. Yeah. Today. today. That's just prophecy right. to me. Mm -hmm. Prophecy to me. Uh -huh. And then uh, there's one on the other side. So he'll, the Lord will put you in a room with great men. Yep. You know, yeah, he'll do it for you. And you know, I serve the Lord long enough now to know that everything is orchestrated. Yeah. You know, even when I, take a minute to say, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the post office today. Yeah. There's that one person that's coming to the post. They got to come the same time I do because the yeah. Lord has to connect us. That's right. Yes. And I said, wow, you're awesome. I love it. He does that. And the other thing I do, uh, I'm always having to uh, do my Bible church school lesson. Uh-huh. My husband is a teacher, and okay. sometimes we'll talk about the lesson at night, but we're I'm always able to get something for that week, an oh. entire lesson yeah. with the history and all. Yeah. So I and and that's good. That's awesome that you're not pulling scriptures out, making them fit your purpose mm. if you know the history. Yeah. And my husband is a great, great, great Bible school teacher. He knows these things. He get him to talking about Israel and all these kinds of things. <laughs> he look, he's in his zone. He said, "No, no, no." Well, they got captured because of this and that. And I mean, he can just tell you all of it. But so I'm, getting, I'm getting the word. I'm getting uh, every week. I love it every week. You know, a couple of things you said. One that stuck out to me was you said the end of the day. And to those that are listening, I want you to capture that because a lot of times when I go out and I look for like, what do successful people do? Everybody talks about they get up two hours early and they do all these things. But Coach Lily said a lot of times she it's the end of the day. And so I want you to capture that what works for one person may not work for you. And then don't make it wrong. You got to do what works for you and i love that and then you say you see him in all things like even going to the post office so it's not just your time with god on sunday morning it's not just your time late at night it's you're literally allowing him to order your steps and mm -hmm. you see him in all things all interactions divine connections all throughout the day did i hear you right? you you heard me perfectly uh-huh and and 
it's not like at the, before my feet hit the floor and when my eyes wake up, I'm yeah. saying, lead me, guide me. I'm giving God the opportunity to mm. structure my day. So yeah. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Oh, I know that he is leading and guiding. I'm good. Right. And That's then right. at the end of the day, and I met it. I said, thank you, Father. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, ah, oh, I saw so-and-so today. I'm so glad I saw them or this or that. Or it's just like you start when you see people, you can make plans for the next day or, That's you right. know. And, put, and particularly now, you know, you're campaigning every minute. You kind That's of know right. that. You sure are. And I'm campaigning for the campaign, and yet I'm still campaigning for my Savior. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you. I'm campaigning. Yes, yeah. glory. I'm campaigning. And I'm telling you this. You're drawing people by the life that you live. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's and exactly right. It is. And, and they know that Coach Lilly... Uh, everybody knows where I stands with the Lord. Yeah. Everybody knows. Now, I love that you say that because um, there was a time, and you said this earlier, you said, you know, when you get as mature as I am, because you've been through this, <laughs> you got some wisdom. There was a time when I tried to separate, when I would go into corporate, I would try to separate who I am spiritually from who I was, who they would see, because I knew there was supposed to be this separation. But after some time, I realized that I am who I am no matter where I am. And so when you call me, you're going to get all of me. I can't leave my faith at the door. And so I love that you say everybody that does business with me, everybody that connects with me knows fully where I stand. Yes, we use wisdom when we go into corporate America, but mm -hmm. they, it doesn't change who I am because I am who I am no matter where I am. Exactly. Exactly. And they, and, and they can appreciate that, too. Yes. They'll appreciate that. Because they know who you are and they know that you're going to be authentic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're not. And people can people can spot when you're not authentic. Every time. Every time. Mm -hmm. So, coach, why is it important um, for us as women to have a, a healthy community of people around us? What does that community look like for you? You know, um, how do we how do we balance that? How do we bring people in? Um into our community. Your community could be your church. It could be, I'm not sure what that is, so I don't want to lead you into that. What does your community look like? Uh, my community changes by the minute, almost. It really does. Now, I have to know that, and I had to learn this, okay. that I'm not an island and I can't do it by myself. That's right. I really had to learn that because I would work so hard at doing what I want to do. My vision was in my head and yeah. I was running it. <laughs> and I had to learn that I've got to carry someone with me. I've yeah. got to have some hand and feet to work with me. Yeah. So uh, some and all during the day, my community changes. Now, mm -hmm. what I do spiritually, I need people like Coach Camilla. Sometimes I've had coaches that I've had to call and and let me tell you that uh, podcast uh, audience, that even though I'm a life coach, I've got to have somebody to stand by me. You, right. You're a life coach and you've got a niche. I work with teenagers, coach, yeah. coaches working with businesses. Somebody else is working with health. Somebody else is working with different uh, audiences. I have to call sometime. I say, Lord, have mercy. I say, you got to pray for me. <laughs> I, I've done it. I've done it. Yeah. I get to the Point. I said, oh, I said, pray. I like, look, I can't talk. Just pray. Pray That's for right. me. That's right. You can't and talk. You, you need that community, though, that you can call on when you need it. Now, you said something that reminded me um, when my husband and I first started our ministry, there were six pastors that spoke into our life. And each one of them spoke something different. They provided a different level of support. Like mm -hmm. there was one that I went to when it came to the husband wife component. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and she told me, she said, there's going to come a time when you can feel like you said this earlier, when you won't feel like you could take over. Don't. Your job is to support. You know, <laughs> there was another one that said, all right, you make sure that you got prayer as the foundation. Right. So everybody offered something different. And sometimes, Coach Lily, we try to find all things in one person. And that's mm -hmm. not realistic. That's not realistic. So do you have that diversity 
uh, of people that you pull from? I do. I do. I have some people that I talk to about business. I have some people I talk to about churches. I have some people that uh, support me like in the schools that I go in when we're doing training. There are different people, different, uh, I call them different strengths that I need to pull from or different wisdoms that I need, you know, imparted within me. That's right. And, and I can tell you again, uh, podcast audience, you always identify with someone that you that has already been where you want to go yes 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 they need to be able to pull from their experience not just it needs to be a a proven they need to have a track record Mm -hmm. otherwise they're just giving you theory Mm. and i need evidence i need fruit Application. <laughs> we need application. Yes. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Yes. I, look, I, well, I ask them, how, how you living? That's right. <laughs> how you living? That's yeah. right. Otherwise, it's just theory because we can pull a theory out of a book, but that don't mean that it's proven. That That's don't right. mean that it's working. Um, mm-hmm. I've I've gone through some transitions with, with my weight. And so when people reach out to me about that, I say, now, this is what worked for me. However, I had to add this or I had to take away that. You know, it don't, nothing just happens the way you read it. There's some mm-hmm. additional things that we have to do and experience provides that. Wisdom provides that. So mm-hmm. I like that you said that. Those people that you're pouring in or those people that you're allowing to pour into you, make sure that they're pouring substance mm-hmm. and not just ideologies. Amen. Yeah, I love it. Well, and and the one, one, other thing, one other thing I really need to say too is that, you know what, a lot of times when the Lord, you say, because I said this, I said, well, you know, I know that God knows everything. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I know that the Lord will speak to you about things. And sometimes, you know, when there's a lot of things on your mind or something, you say, well, Lord, I know you know everything. I need to know, too. <laughs> I need to know. I said, help me. I mean, what is going on, this, that, or the other? But you know what? We have really got to know that the Lord speaks. And you know what? It'll be so soft and so serene. Yeah. And and I'm thinking, I said, oh, God, you did say that. Mm-hmm. And then I go back. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, that was the Lord. That was the Lord. That was the Lord. That was the Spirit of the Lord guiding me. That was the Lord. Thank and you. a lot of things that happened, I can say, I said, thank you, Jesus. That was you orchestrating it or that was you getting it done but i tell you this all day long it's a thank you from my lips and i know he inhabit the praises of the saints i praise him all the day long for everything yeah and uh like i say at the end of the day it's him and me and me and him and i can you know that's how i go to sleep a lot of time yeah well, Coach Lily, listen, I thank you so much for being with me today and sharing your wealth of wisdom and knowledge. I love all of the things that you have going on. Um, one of my friends told me years ago, well, I said to her, I said, how do you do all this international travel? And you got these little kids, like, how do you leave your kids? And mm-hmm. her response to me was, God gave me this ministry and God gave me these children and he's going to show me how to do both. And so I thank you today for showing us that we can do more than just, we don't have to choose. We can do all that God has called us to do. So what would you like to close with? Any any closing thoughts? I would just want to say <clears throat> to all of us on the podcast, the Lord knows exactly what you can do. You know, the older people say, well, God know how much you can stand. He really does. He does. And like, the lady was saying that he gave her that and he gave her the children too. Yeah. We have got to know that he has provided provision yeah. for any vision that he's given you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. He's already provided provision for any vision for that he has given us. And everything that we got to go through put him first and 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 look i just kind of like peep out from behind him sometimes i'm I'm willing to walk let him walk in front of me and i know that's right (laughs) but 
God is able. God is able. And lean and depend on him. Oh, we, you know, we, we quote all these scriptures, but acknowledge him in all your ways. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. So, And thank you. Oh, You're welcome. You, know, you know I'm in my zone when I'm talking. Right? Yes. yes! You know I'm in my it. zone. Uh, and I got to say that I'm gifted. To work with teenagers, yes. we can, look, we see eye to eye. It's, it's wonderful. Yes. And uh, when the Lord has given me a message to give across that pulpit, it is awesome. And yes. when he's given me a message to give right in the in the drugstore, at the post office, at my mailbox, yeah, it is awesome. So mm. I got my hand in his hand. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Coach Lily. <laughs> Y'all listen, Coach Lily is a phenomenal woman, and I'm praying that she wins as she continues to run the race in her state. I know great things are going to happen. Y'all make sure y'all tag her and share and let her know how she encouraged you on today, um, on this podcast on today.